you will be in small groups to explore in practices. We will be six or seven groups. And in those small groups, obviously you will first start by introducing yourselves to, your, to the other group members, and then you will be given some links to go and explore some practices, links to examples of public engagement. And you will explore those links. They are, uh, you will be given several <coughs> links for each group. For example, one group will explore um, games in public engagement and you will have links towards several games. And sometimes the link will be a link to an article and the article will have links inside to other examples of games. So you are free to explore as much as you want, as far, as far as you want. You can even Google some things if you'd like to find more examples or have some doubts or whatever, or if you want to explore further. So starting with the links I'm going to give to you, you are going to explore all those, uh, all, all this practice, and you will be given a fairly large amount of time. You will have 25 minutes, which is rather long. But please don't be fooled by, by this long, apparently long time because during this time, you will have to explore, you will have a lot of matter. For example, in, some, in many of the links, you will see uh, simply a website presenting um, an activity happening, but sometimes you will see an academic article detailing or evaluating an article, uh, a practice, and that is much longer. So don't think you have to read everything in detail. You may also just browse quickly, uh, have a look, have a glance here and there, the, the important, you, you can also organize your group as you wish. You can o either all see together the same link and discuss about it, or everyone can go into a different link and then you come back and, and discuss them together. For this, you are free to organize yourself as you wish. But basically, you are, you are a small working group devoted to one practice, having some links and resources to explore them. And what you have to do is, first of all, discuss to understand what is this practice, what does it cover? What different variety of things does it cover? What do you think is the value to the public for this? What are the assets of this practice? Why does it work well? What are the, is the value to the researcher? Why should a researcher do this? What does, may it bring to the researcher? But also what are the main constraints, the issues, the challenges, the difficulties of this practice? And last, of course, are there some types of research which, which are suitable or unsuitable for this practice? Maybe it's a practice that's great for social sciences or that's great for uh, controversial issues, but that's not great to talk about something that is maybe particle physics. So you'll have to, to, to discuss that among you. What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses of this practice? What are the best uh, context for this practice? And what are the, con the, the challenges? So very shortly, I'll ask each group, one after the other, to take three minutes to present the practice that they have explored. What is it? What seems interesting about it or what is striking about it? What is the value of it to the participants, to the public, to the researchers? What are the constraints, the drawbacks? And what is a favorable context or favorable research to apply it? And what is, seems less favorable? Then after this few minutes of presentation, of the, uh, we, if there are some questions from the rest of us, we can have a very quick one or two minutes of discussion and then we'll move to the next group. Group one, you had to explore the topic of showing your research in various ways by telling, by dancing, by drawing. So can you tell us quickly what you found and how you analyzed it? Okay, we, we researched those uh, examples, um, which are really uh, interesting examples of, uh, of ways of presenting uh, the research. And as for the first question, what it is, we, uh, we were discussing that it's a, it's a matter of uh, transposition of research into different types of mediums for different types of audiences that can relate with, with certain topics. Um, the value to the public, uh, we find value for the, uh, to the public in terms of supporting the public to be better educated, um, to get to know the, the research team. Uh, it also came up uh, the, the answer of entertainment factor 
so this this performative but also you know, really artistic element was uh, was something that was really interesting uh, within those uh, examples that were presented and in terms of widening the the target group that the research is not just reserved for the academics but also for for uh, a wider uh, audience uh, so they can relate with uh, the research um, the value to the researcher uh, is was to build a bridge between academics and wider public um, in terms of exploring uh, also new topics and developing new methods of translation of the research for the target audience. Um, the, okay, the main constraints, issues or challenges, we actually didn't find any um, any particular uh, constraints uh, uh, with regards to those uh, three examples. Um, we thought also about other ways of presenting, for example, because all, all of them are very, very performative. So we can also think about uh, um, lecture performance, which is also a, a, a kind of merging of uh, um, the theory and practice, this performativity part, uh, maybe also audio books, um, but again, it depends of how to, uh, what kind of audience you have. So if you have, uh, for example, people who have, uh, I don't know, uh, blindness, then what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, medium would be appropriate to present the, the research uh, team to them? Just first of all, thank you very much for, the, for, for this very relevant uh, look on this practice. And indeed, you had as you can see already by telling your PhD in three minutes, by dancing your PhD, drawing your PhD, it's a matter of translation with very strong constraints, such as you have only three minutes to explain your whole topic and why it's important to you and to the world, or uh, make it a dance, even if you don't know how to dance, um, or make it a comic book. And uh, this is the, the, the nice, uh, I, I agree with you that for, I think any research topic can fit into this category, the nice thing is that it's very open to anyone because any research topic can be transformed into, it can be told by a media. And for researchers, it's a, quite, it's a quite comfortable way to do public engagement because you are telling about your research and you're knowledgeable about your research. So you are transforming your research into something else, but we're still speaking about mainly your research and your research only and its value. So it's less, let's say, maybe destabilizing than other practices we're gonna see uh, later. The difficulty is of course, you need some either uh, oral skill, uh, being able to speak in front of an audience in three minutes being catchy and, and energetic or to, to be able to, even if you're not a dancer, to show your body, if you are not a drawer, to find a drawer and work with a drawer who can make a comic book uh, or draw them yourself. So there are some specific skills you'd have to either work on or accept to practice at amateur level uh, with, the, with the audience. Um, obviously, there is also the question of the channel. How, you, how will you send these drawings, dances, speeches? Uh, and obviously, if you do very often, for example, a three minute thesis is often done in universities. So the, the audience that would move and go and sit in a university is not the same one as is a quite specific audience, which is, very good and acceptable, but you have to be aware that here you are uh, target, the, the audience who will come is the one that is aware of university events and who is ready to come and sit in a university. Thank you very much. We move to, to group two, who focused on games. Shall I tell something about the game? <laughs> yes, please. Tell, tell us quickly okay. what, was, what were these games and what did you find as value and as constraints? Uh, there was a game, iWire, and it is a game uh, where the citizens can make a 3D puzzle of the neurons in the brain and can help uh, the bio uh, bio biology and medical researchers by their research project to find more neurons in the brain, and the 3D puzzle um, works. Uh, from artificial intelligence. Uh, that was the game. <laughs> I could understand on the website. <laughs> okay, no worries. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> because you had to sign in. So okay. that was the information uh, I could find. 
that's fine. It, it, was, it was just one example of game, but, but yes. Did you see other games? Um, or did you that? read about other games? <laughs> you or anyone else from the group too? So now we split the task uh, and I had uh, a website uh, in uh, which you could uh, download uh, or create and download uh, a card game. And uh, the point was really to uh, have a group discussion and the challenge of the game was to find a richer consensus. And uh, um, the interest for the public is simply to discuss and learn, to explore new topics, and uh, for scientists uh, to actively involve the public in a certain topic. Uh, the constraints I found was the time, as it takes 90 minutes, and well, find uh, the right uh, audience, and also, uh, well, uh, the challenge of the game uh, that is interesting is to reach a consensus. Um, then, uh, well, interest, uh, I think it's really interesting for all uh, type of science as uh, it was really reaching, uh, it was really covering uh, many subjects. So um, I didn't find uh, a use for a specific one, but it can be really used by any researcher or else. Thank you very much. A anything else, any other games or other considerations related to games from the group two? Yeah, I think it was like it's um, like they wanted to tell us how games or like virtual reality can be used to exchange ideas or like to have a plan. I, I like this idea that you, for example, want to have a new neighborhood and then you can like in virtual reality you can go around and see if you like it and then you participate like what you want to change um, and I think this is good that you can participate but I also think it's bad because there is no reality feedback so I would say I wanted this and that and also I think it's very difficult to reach the final con like conclusion to decide like we want to do it like this um then i think it's good to use it as a citizen science especially for kids like they can in virtual reality you can really like then see how things are going on and also for um yeah public understanding and citizen science what else i wanted to say something more but i forgot <laughs> no i think it's interesting for researchers uh, but then you are also very much tied to another like person who knows how to do games. So it's difficult to do it for a researcher itself or herself or himself. Thank you very much. There was, uh, thank, yes. Yeah, there was also a nice example of how six PhD students show their PhD project through video games. And in order to do that, they were also held by uh, video gamers developers. So I think it was also a nice, you know, example of how, you know, uh, video game developers, the IT people with the researchers that were also working together in these kind of things. But as Simona said, it was, I think it was a really nice example, but at the end, the public, the target public is quite a limit because you cannot, uh, with, with video games, you cannot go to all the public. So it's more for teenagers, young people, or people who really know about technology. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anything else you'd like to add from the group too? No, okay, great. Thank you. I think you, you, you've said most things. I would like just to outline, first of all, you've said the need of a partnership for these types of, acti of actions, not only for hosting, but really just for development of the activity. Uh, unless you have some game development skills yourself, you will need some support either in coding or even just for a board game in how to develop a board game, how a board game work. It's, it's, it's a specific skill and a specific job. So you'll have to work with partners who have this know-how and are ha happy to collaborate with you. That's what one of the, from, I, I have been involved in, in similar uh, projects before. And one of the things that researchers loved was actually working with the game developers and seeing how their research could be translated into the game and it could gamify it in a way. Uh, this is something that, they, that was, has been highly, highly enjoyed. Um, so this is, would be very important. You have various types of games. Some are more entertaining and like can be quick paced or can be exploratory and 
but some can be more deliberative, like they decide the one I think uh, Simona you've explored. Uh, was no, it was not Simona. It was uh, Isabella, right? I think Isabella explored this one play decide, which is a board game with cards, which is not really fun. I mean, there is no fun uh, mechanism. It's more a game with the cards. You will read some elements of knowledge and you will debate. So it's uh, the game is here to frame a debate. So as you've said, it needs a lot of, you need a lot of time in organization for this. Uh, so usually, for example, the play disabled is often played with schools because the children are captive and they have to stay for half an hour for one hour and a half. But you can also play um, these types of games in other places. For example, there are some shorter discussion games, shorter than Play Decide, more easy to start and, to, and, and that can be done in 30 minutes. And those are often done in pubs and in bars and in cafes. So you can even print the game materials uh, on the beer coaster or, or on the papers you put on the table, usually to keep it clean, uh, so that the material of the bar that you have to drink is already printed for the game and and then engage the people in the in the bar to to the ones who want of course you need uh, to, to to do the game but for this once again you will need not only someone to design the game but in that case also a facilitator because this game is a debate game is highly facilitated and you need someone who has the some facilitating experience um all right thank you very much for this and we'll move to the next group three which is focusing on Hackathons. Nice. Malen, you want yes. to, to introduce <laughs> and uh, yeah, we could uh, interact. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Ah, okay. So, no, yeah. uh, just a few words. If you want, I'm introducing and if you want to, to add it something. Hmm? So, um, to the best of our knowledge, uh, Hackathon is an, uh, an activity that uh, we could um, develop uh, in terms of research, I, I'm supposing, to interact directly with the uh, people clustered in uh, small groups, um, starting from uh, broader challenges or specific uh, issues to discuss in order to acquire uh, uh, values from the public in uh, uh, collecting ideas, suggestions that are more practical, uh, supporting decision making in a policy making or managerial uh, uh, environment. Mm. So this is to the best of our knowledge what uh, we uh, learned uh, in our brainstorming uh, uh, minutes ago. So um, from the point of view of we, what is the value to the public is just like to interact with them and co-creating something that could be also useful to improve their lifestyles and in general giving suggestions to the uh, public institutions or private companies in order to support the development in the eco-society environment. This is what, what I'm thinking about and uh, summarizing our brainstorming uh, that we did. Uh, what is the value to the researcher? Uh, developing an hackathon's activity, the value is uh, to collect some ideas, uh, information, data, in order to uh, improve and remodulating our, for example, uh, research questions and uh, uh, remodulating also the research activities in finding, uh, in terms of theoretical and practical points, uh, something that is uh, concretely a social value at the end, because it's completely linked uh, to the to the real uh, uh, economy or real society troubles that the public engaged in the hackathons uh, gave us. You have one last minute. One last minute. Challenges: the targeting of the, the people that we have, the budget that we have to allocate the resources to develop this activity and also targeting issues, objectives to uh, give the small groups activities in, 
in engaging and the use of all open on uh, multiple choices, open question on multiple choices issues. So maybe this is my point of view. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there a quick addition from anyone else from this group? A quick one. No, I think we just, uh, we, we um, had a bit of a hard time wrapping our heads around what does the concept actually entail practically? And is it useful when within social science, for instance, if you don't have skills for coding and uh, using IT-based solutions? So actually we discussed the challenges the, the most. Um, so yes, uh, thank you very much for this. Indeed, hackathons are things that are quite heavy to organize and to build uh, because you need a venue, you need a very strong organization, you need a facilitation as well and a very uh, structured day with activities. You need to recruit people from with various skills. The interest of hackathon is having participants having a wide variety of skills, whether it is coding, whether it is just knowledge of the city, if you're designing something about the city. Uh, so it's quite a heavy work and it's usually not a huge number of participants that you will involve. It's, you will not have thousands of people in the hackathon. So uh, it's intensive for a small number of people. However, it's very qualitative, meaning that this, these few people will spend a lot of time together, uh, create their own ideas, build on your research. So you, you may have some great insight and ideas. It's a very qualitative uh, type of methodology. Thank you very much. We'll move to the next group, which is group four, which has focused, I think, initially on art and science collaborations. Okay, Didier, thank you. The question is, what happens when you put an artist and a scientist in a room together? And the answer is that the result will be an installation or an artwork that probably will be very interesting in order to transmit something about, communicate something about science and, and research. And this public, uh, this is a, in, in our opinion, this is a good public engagement uh, sample that tries to build, that tries to build a relationship between scientists and, and artists and, and, tries, and tries to discuss their findings with the public in an easy and understand, understandable way. We have seen a lot of examples in, in our links about, uh, about neuroscience, physiology, immunology, genetics, and even about uh, health and health curation and pain. And in, in all these cases, there was a, 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 a the, the, the idea the idea basically was to transmit that science uh, can be uh, very easy easy in it can be the we can disseminate science in a very easy uh, way. What what is the value for the public? Basically, is that they get awareness about some very important questions and about how art can contribute to the, in, in some cases, even to heal people uh, with dancing, drawing, and painting activities. Mm, while for the researcher, they can transmit simplified scientific concepts and, and, and also become more now. In our opinion, what are the main constraints uh, or challenges? We, we saw that there is no direct interaction uh, of the public in most of the cases, but because we, we, we saw a lot of films and examples of portraits, and in, we think that there is the risk that there is no interaction, or in some cases, there is, not, uh, there is no participation of the, of the public. About the question of uh, if, if, if there are particular types of research suitable or unsuitable, the conclusion that we arrived is that any kind of scientific fields can be disseminated uh, with, with art, with, art uh, with artworks or other uh, kind of installations. Didier. Thank you very much. Anything else you'd like to add about group four? 
from group four. So Just to say that very, very well explained it, Javier, all the ideas that Thank we you. are discussing in the group. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Also, I also wanted just to say that uh, he explained everything quite uh, good. So I do not have anything to add. To Thank you. I, I, and I fully yeah. agree with both of you. Thanks, <laughs> thanks Javier, for, the, for this very clear presentation. So to uh, indeed, as you said, just coming back to one element, which is with which kind of field of research field is it uh, more interesting? And for example, we saw that in games, you can almost make games from any topic. However, if you want to make a discussion game or a debate game, then probably it's more interesting and it's, it will be much more easy and efficient if your research topic is a controversial one or is linked to science and society questions and to people's lives, because there, there is something to debate about. And then people will have their own expertise of their life or their own values to put, on in, the, to put in the debate. Whereas if you're studying astrophysics, uh, you can find some debate questions, but it would be less easy than if you're speaking about genetic disease, for example, or about uh, smoking in the city or transport in the city. Um, now, uh, coming, coming back to art and science, I would say, once again, everything is, is possible. It's very open, but there are some topics where it's more easy. And once again, if it has a link with people's lives, either because it's in their organization, like the city, but also in terms of body. One of the examples that you had was a festival which tackled a lot of things about breathlessness uh, and about pain. So obviously, if you're tackling a topic like pain, for an artist, it's a wonderful topic to explore in various ways. Uh, and for the audience, there is something where they can identify or understand, uh, look at their own life in new ways. So it's once again here, a, a wonderful, wonderful topic to, to work on. Uh, art and science collaborations are also great for topics where there are ethical issues, where there are possible controversy, political issues at stake, because art is quite great to, to strike people and, and force them to face uncomfortable questions or have these uncomfortable questions rise. Um, and we will go immediately to the next group, which is a group focusing on something quite specific, which have been trending a lot in the very recent years in, uh, in the science uh, communication community, which are escape rooms. So group five, your turn. Yes, maybe it's up to me to present our, our work. Uh, as maybe most of you know, an escape room is a game in which a team, uh, so a group of people is locked in a room. And this group must uh, um, try a way to escape from this room by figuring out puzzles. Um, so uh, due to the characteristics of this, uh, of this practice, uh, the value for the public could be the fact that uh, they can engage and having fun without necessarily having to, to have a wider motivation behind that. So behind the fact that they will have fun. While uh, from the point of view of the researcher, uh, maybe it could be uh, an opportunity to have a wider audience as they, uh, this audience will have fun by participating in this kind of research. Um, as for the, um, the research fields that we think uh, would be more suitable for this kind of practice, we thought that maybe um, research fields like technology, archaeology, or in general, uh, the natural sciences, so biology or geology, could be suitable for this kind of research, while it could, it could be uh, much more harder for blue sky research, so uh, more theoretical uh, uh, fields, uh, such as theoretical mathematics, uh, or, or also maybe uh, the, so the social sciences research fields. And uh, uh, the challenges that uh, a researcher could, uh, could um, could find 
could be uh, the fact that it uh, uh, could be potentially costly, especially if uh, um, the escape room is uh, uh, organized in a physical space, even if, uh, as we, we saw, we can have also a digital escape room. So we had also a very nice example online. Or also another problem could be the fact that uh, all the, the game should be based on uh, understandable problems for common citizens. So it could it should be uh, studied very well before its implementation. And that's all. Thank you very much. Anything to add from group five? Maybe I lost all my group mates. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you were extremely clear. So okay. Thank you very much for this. Uh, and we'll move immediately to the last, to, no, and that was the last group actually, wonderful. So we are right on time, wonderful. Um, so thank you very much for this. Escape rooms have been trending a lot. They are great because first of all, because as with any game or any new activity that is trending, science communication immediately thinks, oh, teenagers are all, and, and students are all doing escape rooms, maybe we can do one about science. And especially our escape rooms are about investigating, solving puzzles for engagement in science and research. It's great. So you even had an example related to law research, um, where even if you don't have the puzzle related to the research, the whole universe and the finding of the stories behind the escape room can be uh, linked to your research. But I agree with you in terms of topics, your analysis I think is very relevant. If you have some time now, I uh, in the following weeks, I invite all of you, first of all, to come back to the, uh, the senior role, but also to the Google link. I did write it in, uh, in on the mural in a, in a yellow post-it, uh, close to my big orange post-it, uh, the link to the Google uh, doc, where you have all the links so you can explore the other kinds of practices and have a look at the variety of them. There are two groups that we, that we haven't used. One is actually close to art and science. It's a part of, let's say, art and science collaboration, which is immersive theater. And one very good example, for example, is this invincible play, which was a, a, a theater play where you were inside the situation with a family arguing about something that is related to enhancing your brain, changing your DNA to to, to enhance your body or your brain and who you are. Uh, it was uh, done by the University of Bristol and you even had some moments where the audience could vote or give their views on this with smileys uh, to see if they would agree, they were happy about this, this outcome or this decision or unhappy about it. Or with Edinburgh, for example, which was done in Scotland, in Edinburgh, uh, and that Edinburgh was, uh, was a zombie night uh, in, in Edinburgh, I let you discover this uh, with a very specific humor, but a very, very interesting one. They, they won, the, it was, I think, uh, seven years ago, something like this, and they won the award from the NCCP for this action. Uh, and the last thing is the seventh group is about meeting researchers. So it's just um, actions that are less focused on your research, but a little bit on the researcher and meeting who is the researcher, what is the life of the researcher. And in that, we have science cafes where you can meet a researcher. You will speak about the research, of course, but you are here to meet and chat with a researcher in an informal way. You have the action meet the researcher online uh, from the Imperial College, the speed dating event. I did put you one here, but for the European Researchers Night, uh, we, we use this a lot in mo all countries in Europe, uh, speed datings where People were coming and have, used to have only a few minutes, like four or seven minutes with a researcher, ask all the questions they want, chat as much as they want about whatever they want, but four minutes and then change tables and they discover another researcher. So in one hour, in half an hour, they will meet a lot of researchers. Um, and human library, I mentioned already. So it's something a bit different, but that can be a great inspiration. And uh, I am a scientist as well, which is le less uh, led by a person, but by, more by boards and information, but still the same idea behind. So I will invite you to have a glance, explore these practices, see, see which one strike you. If you're a researcher, which one could apply to your research? If you are a supporter of research, which ones do you think has the most value to the publics and to the researchers? Which one would you like to foster? to encourage researchers doing, if you were launching a call for tender, would you launch a call and try to ask for games? Would you launch a call and try to ask for debate-oriented activities, whether they are games or others, or, or artistic collaborations? 
what do you think has the most value for your researchers or from uh, or, or for for the, for the public so that you just instead of just doing public engagement at large you can focus a little bit more and 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 push one type of impact i leave you for the week with these questions what practices strike you strike you which practices strike you the most uh, which ones would you like to foster among researchers which one would you like to try yourself and are there opportunities for specific practices in your research topic Thank you very much. I wish you an excellent day and I will see you uh, next week for the next session which where we tackle impact and evaluation. Thanks and have a great day. Bye. Thank you. You Thank too. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.